Yesterday was truly a day for the history books in the United States. There aren't that many days every decade, never mind century, um, like what we saw yesterday. The failed former president, Donald Trump, was arrested, booked, indicted and pleaded not guilty for 37 felony counts, was instructed not to be in contact with uh, any other defendants nor witnesses, a requirement which he immediately broke last night. Trump then flew back to his Bedminster, New Jersey uh, golf resort, I think it is, where he actually um, admitted to some of the crimes that he is accused of, despite claiming total innocence and claiming that he didn't do anything. And we now move into two different new phases, the pretrial phase with this latest federal indictment, as well as the waiting game for what may be a second federal indictment for Trump's role in the January 6th Trump riots and a state indictment out of the state of Georgia for Trump's attempt to incorrectly, fraudulently, illegally overturn the correct results from Georgia in 2020 in which now President Joe Biden won the popular vote of Georgia and subsequently the uh, electoral votes from Georgia. So let's start at the beginning. The Miami Herald reporting Trump sits silently in Miami courtroom, pleads not guilty in historic case. Former President Donald Trump pleaded not guilty Tuesday in Miami federal court to a 37 count indictment accusing him of deliberately keeping at his Palm Beach estate government documents that contained highly sensitive defense, weapons and nuclear information and of obstructing efforts by U.S. authorities to reclaim them in a packed courtroom. And remember, there were no cameras in the courtroom. So all we have are these descriptions in a packed courtroom. Trump, ent Trump entered his plea in a historic case marking the first federal prosecution of a former president and a potential hurdle in his renewed quest for the presidency in the 2024 election. Trump's lawyer, Todd Blanche, representing Trump alongside Chris Keyes, said, quote, we most certainly enter a plea of not guilty. Trump was arraigned a day before his 77th birthday. That will be relevant later as well, appearing before Magistrate Judge Jonathan Goodman. Trump said nothing during the 45 minute proceeding. Um, prosecutor David Harbach told the judge his team would prepare a list of witnesses with whom Trump cannot communicate about the case before the trial. Trump was released on his own recognizance with no monetary bond and no travel restrictions. So I think it's important to mention one of the reasons that this indictment generally is important is that we want a justice system that doesn't have exceptions where no one is above the law. And despite what you're hearing from the maggots, magadonians, uh, magapotamians, whatever you want to call them, despite what you're hearing from them, that this is evidence of a two tier justice system in a bad way. In fact, we know we have a two tier justice system. Trump being indicted is maybe a slight half step in the direction of no one is above the law. However, there still are favoritisms that are being given to Trump including the fact that he was released on his own recognizance with no monetary bond, as well as no travel restrictions. Many other defendants, not former presidents of the United States, by the way, individuals without private jets with which they could fly anywhere at any time would have been given a monetary bond and may have had travel restrictions put in place. So just something to keep in mind. The Associated Press also reporting uh, and they have an interesting drawing of what the scene in the courtroom looked like. Trump reportedly looking glum and having his arms uh, crossed at many uh, moments during this uh, writes Trump approached his arraignment with characteristic bravado, posting social media broadsides <laughs> against the prosecution from inside his motorcade en route to the courthouse and insisting that he has done nothing wrong and was being persecuted for political purposes. We are going to discuss that. But the article writes inside the courtroom, he sat silently scowling and arms crossed as a lawyer entered a not guilty plea on his behalf in a brief arraignment that ended without him having to surrender his passport, et cetera, et cetera. Always in campaign mode, he swiftly pivoted from a solemn courtroom to a festive restaurant, stopping on his way out of Miami 
at Versailles, an iconic Cuban spot where listen, we'll talk about this later, but they sang happy birthday to Trump, Trump turning 77 today and also uh, prayed over Trump, which was really quite a scene. What we are going to uh, look at today and uh, mu much of today's program will be related to the fallout from this arrest, admittedly, and we will talk about other issues as well. And then tomorrow we will move on. Part of today's program is going to look at number one. Why is Trump defending himself on the basis of a different set of restrictions, the Presidential Records Act, rather than the criminal code, than that under which he has been charged? Uh, we are going to discuss that. Why is Trump admitting to having done many of the things that he is accused of doing in the indictment? Well, it's because he thinks that that's actually a defense of sorts. And maybe most importantly, at this point in time, politically for the United States, is this the get out of jail free card that some Republicans have been waiting for to say this is too much. We can no longer support this man for many Republican elected officials. This is that moment for others like Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert um, and other people. It is not. And they are steadfast, steadfast in their support. And lastly, what about your average Trump supporter? Well, Luke Beasley was on the ground for us in Miami yesterday, interviewing a number of the several hundred, maybe most a thousand people who came out to support Trump in Miami. So we are going to get to, to all of that. But let's start with Trump's own speech after the arrest. Think of your most personal emails. If you're using a free email provider, you should know that they're scanning every email you send and receive even after you delete it. They're usually using the data to build a picture of your life to show you ads, which many find creepy. Our sponsor start mail never scans or tracks your emails. Privacy is what comes first. And unlike other email services, when you delete an email in start mail, it is gone forever. It also protects your data by blocking tracking pixels in emails, which companies and hackers can use to track you. You can create unlimited email aliases to protect your identity and cut down on spam. You can encrypt every email you send, even if the recipient isn't using encryption. Startmail gives you 20 gigs of storage. That's more than you get on Gmail. And it only takes a few clicks to migrate all of your emails and contacts over to Startmail. Go to startmail.com slash Pacman to get 50% off your first year. That's only about two bucks a month. The link is down below.